We're tapping into the wisdom that we all have, our experiences. Um, if you haven't had a chance to sign in yet for today's workshop, now's a great time to do it. So if you take a look up at the screen, um, you'll see the phone number there. Pull out your phones, uh, punch that number in. Um, we're asking you to do this because we want to be able to send you the um, certificate of completion for today's workshop. Um, sometimes sports leagues request that you turn those in. Um, another reason is that we are um, wanting to send you some weekly, very helpful weekly coaching tips, and you'll have access to some other resources. And also PCA likes to keep track of our impact on um, educating coaches throughout the nation. So this is the way you do it. Um, put in the phone number and then you will be uh, texting in, in the format that you see on the screen. So it's important that you follow that format. So it's a hashtag and the event number. There's no space in between the hashtag and the event number. Hit the return. First name, last name, hit the return and then your email address. And remember with that email address, um, don't put any spaces in that either. Um, so please know that we won't be sharing this contact information with anybody else. And that once you've put in the information, you should receive a text that comes back to you confirming your sign up. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, Let's get a feel for the um, level of experience in the room. I'm just curious, how many of you have ever attended a PCA workshop in the past of any kind? No. A few hands up in the air. Also curious, um, for how many of you is 2019 your very first year that you're coaching any kind of youth sports? Oh, good. I see that we have some new people in the room. Um, how many of you have been coaching youth sports for five or more years? Well, let's take a look at how long these hands stay up in the year, in the air, sorry. How about 10 or more years? How many of you have been coaching youth sports for 10 or more years? Good, good. How about 15 or more years? Still a few hands. How about 20 or more years? That's awesome. That's like a whole generation of coaching. Um, good to know we have so much experience in the room. Thank you so much. Um, well, let me tell you a little bit more about the Positive Coaching Alliance. It was, it's a nonprofit that was established at Stanford University in 1998. Um, you can see from this slide that we reach over 80,000 coaches uh, a year with these workshops and with trainings. All the numbers that you see on the slide are for per year. So that in, in turn reaches about 3.3 .3 million um, uh, athletes. Um, I guess it's a slide not going up or. <laughs> sorry, okay. sorry, there, there we go. Oh, okay, <laughs> I didn't know. I, I need to get with it. All right, and about 2,500 live workshops and um, over a million visits to our online resource, the PCA development zone um, where people can um, ask questions, et cetera. So over a million visits there. Um, so what does the phrase positive coaching mean to you? And um, Kelly? Um, I think positive coaching means a coach that is really just in it for the right reasons, that they're very supportive and encouraging of the players. And they just, they really, like what they do and they're just really a, a positive happy coach they're a happy person they don't yell at the kids and scream at them and make them embarrass them precisely and with positive coaching as it says you're creating an atmosphere that really supports the best possible performances thank you kelly um so uh, part of what what pca is all about is the double goal coach about um trying to get the it's about you know, getting the best performance out of your players while at the same time learning those positive, learning life lessons along the way. And so PCA's motto is better athletes, better people. And all this sort of works together. And so in the workshop, we'll be talking about the philosophy of positive coaching and we'll be giving you some actual tools that you can use uh, with your athletes and with your teams. So the, the benefits of positive coaching are overwhelmingly supported by 
researchers across a number of different areas and by sports psychologists, by coaches, by athletes, that positivity really works better and that negativity tends to distract or tends to take away. So why do you suppose there is so much negativity in sports today? Can I, what are your thoughts, Ruben? Yeah, um, well, I think there's negativity because uh, sports are emotional. Um, it's usually our kids um, that we're either coaching or that we're watching play. And when our, our kid gets knocked down or the ref makes a bad call against our child, it, you know, they, we, we tend yeah. to react pretty strongly. Um, we all want to win and we're not all going to win every day. So I think there's some frustration built in there that results in negativity also. So true. So true. Kelly, do you have anything to add? I think there's just a lot of pressure on kids these days. And I think the, a lot of the pressure comes from their parents and they just want these, these teams cost a lot of money and the parents think that their kids happiness is dependent upon their success on the field. So they get very upset and emotional when their kids aren't performing the way they should be. Precisely. And uh, when I think about from my own experiences, I think um, sometimes when we think about how we were coached in our youth, maybe we're, um, we're going with what we had learned then. And, Again, with, with research, um, we've learned that positivity works better and we can, and now maybe it just is more of a matter of teaching coaches or having them come to workshops like today to learn more about the tools in positive coaching. Um, so we see uh, the question, what makes a great youth sports experience for kids? Um, Kelly, Ruben, if you could, or if you can grab somebody close to you and, and share your ideas of how you would answer this question. Like share with a partner? Yes, please do. Okay. Share, 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 share. Share, share, share. I agree. I agree. What are you talking about? <laughs> another one of your another one of your crazy ideas, Kelly. Usually they are. <laughs> I think whoever is like a little shy to get going, right? But then once they start talking, then it's hard to slow them down. And how uh -huh. much build? It takes like maybe like a 30 minute really probably to kind of get to that. And then it's chatter, 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 and it's kind of hard to bring them back in again. So how would you bring yeah. us back in if we were chatting, 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 chatting? I would say, I would just say, thank you, thank you. Uh, I would ask for a little bit of feedback. Maybe that's the way if they're really kind of like, quote, going loose on that, <laughs> going full bore on that question, and then to bring them back in and ask a couple people to share. Mm -hmm. So I'll and, share, I'll share. Sure. Um, we, we, we said that we think that um, uh, f uh, fun practices are really important because um, you know, the kids tend to look forward to the games, but we got to make practice uh, fun and make sure that the kids aren't standing around waiting in lines and um, that they're, they're actually active throughout practices. Yeah. That's right. More reps, more opportunities to play. Okay. Um, well, um, here's what PCA has learned about um, what children really want from their uh, athletic experiences. What, what the kids really want is they want that feeling of connectedness to their teammates and to their coach. Another key thing that kids want is like the understanding or something that they need is the understanding that with their effort, they can improve in their sport. And finally, it, um, they also need um, like that feeling of being proud about uh, playing um, honorably, acting with integrity in their sports experiences. So if your players got these three things, what do you think might would happen? Kelly? I think they'd be a lot more successful. I think they would work harder for me. Um, I think they'd come back next year and want to play. Precisely, precisely. Thank you so much. Um, so how do we do it? So this is the PCA's coaching model. We're working on the three things we just talked about, that connectedness that children need to their teammates, and coaches, that's all about filling the emotional tank. Um, the idea that the athlete understands that they can improve with their effort in the sport, that's all about the elm tree of mastery. And the idea of feeling proud about um, and playing with integrity is, is all about honoring the game. So now let's explore what um, positive coaching is all about. And we say that's the double goal coach. There's the striving to win, and the teaching life lessons. The striving to win is, um, is about the competitiveness and doing your best in the sport. And whether, whether you're a double goal coach or a win at all cost coach, 
both kinds of coach really fo are focusing on that striving to win. However, the double goal coach also focuses on teaching life lessons. That's the key difference that they see it's even more important and it's more valuable to be teaching life lessons along the way. So um, what might be some of these life lessons that kids can learn from their being in a sports environment? Do you have some ideas? Teamwork. Wonderful. Goal, goal I think setting. Res yeah, resilience, goal I would say. Resilience, uh, how about grit? Bounce, yeah, bouncing back from failure, defeat, um, winning, winning, winning graciously, humility, work ethic. I just think there's uh, all wonderful ideas and so many more. Um, the, the youth sports environment is just rich with opportunities to learn, um, to, for coaches to teach life lessons. And so it's a shame that the win at all costs kind of coach doesn't see the importance of that um, in the coaching experience. Whereas again, the double goal coach really sees um, both parts, the striving to win and the teaching life lessons. So I guess. So, so I, I guess there's like the other slide where the little things go together, but yeah. Oh, it's, it's, just, it's because in this, if you want to keep talking about this, it's because yeah. in this mode, we don't have the animations. Uh, yeah. Was, okay. Was so, there some, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to keep going. I, yeah, I'm sorry. Keep so going, here, keep, going here, keep going. The additional slide. So um, that really that striving to win and teaching co um, life lessons are the two goals. Often those two goals are very complementary, complementary to each other. There are times, however, it's not as easy to be the double goal coach. I'll give a classic example of that. And then I'm sure that you can think of from all of your coaching experience um, of some some other scenarios. So classic example would be uh, you're in a competition and the strongest player on your team gets called for a foul or a penalty of some type and that person starts arguing with an official. We know that it's not appropriate for an athlete to be arguing with an official about a call in, in the game at any time. And so this is the key difference between how a double goal coach would react versus how a win at all cost coach would react. So how do you think a win at all uh, win at all costs coach would react in that scenario? They'd keep him in. They'd let him keep playing. Oh, exactly, because that win at all costs coach does not want to remove that strong player. Whereas the double goal coach would would remove that player from the game, and that's about teaching the lesson of um, you know teaching life lessons. So um, I guess I. I'd segue to the next slide from there. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's the opening set. That's the opening in the, in the one hour, uh, Kelly, do you want yeah, is, I have it up. I pulled, I finally got it up. Okay. Is, is Connie want to keep going or do you want her to keep going? Is she, uh, I well, I'm, I'm, I wasn't oh. as prepared for the next, I mean, I, I, okay. I've been practicing the whole darn thing, but I wasn't as prepared for that. Okay. Well, then yeah, maybe I offered her the opportunity to keep going, but she said she just wanted to okay. do the intro. Okay, yeah, we'll stop right here then. So, but we okay. can take more dates on the calendar. I'll come in and do, like, I had it broken up then by each section. Of course, that mm -hmm. Elm Tree of Mastery is the longer one, right? And then, yeah, the other two are a little bit shorter. But we can maybe do, like, Elm Tree of Mastery and then do the other three. or I'm, And I count it by the other two and then the wrap-up. That's sort of mm -hmm. how I was looking at it. But I'll just okay. have you look at it. No, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, the, the biggest part I think is just the transition between the principles too, because yeah. we don't want it to be like so disjointed, like here's this, and then here's this, and then here's this. Yeah. So um, after your introduction, how would you transition into the first principle? Oh, um, so you're talking more like, oh, I see. Okay, right, right. Okay, so after that introduction about what the double goal coach is. Um, okay, so like well, the last slide would be the, you know, you, you did the double goal coach model. And you did the three topics again. Yeah. Or the three principles again. Yes. I would just quickly review that again because I think that, you know, then that does segue into talking about um, the Elm Tree. I'm sorry. It was, what is the first one? It is the Elm Tree of Mastery. Yes. Filling emotional tanks. Yeah. Filling the emotional oh, tanks. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's what, like, I like that there is that, like, little, you know, it gives you the three parts and then you, then you talk about one part, it gives you the three parts, talk about one part like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. All right. My Andrew, All right. Et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh huh. No, that's fine. 
That's fine. And, and this one, the introduction is a little bit shorter, so I think that's that's okay. Shelly, I'm flaunting yeah, my. I didn't my compare it. Is there that much missing from that introduction compared to what was like the usual? Uh, the, 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 I think it's about half. Um, quite yeah, honestly, there's, there's 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 there's. And I, you know, I, I'm I good. I'm fine. good. Yeah. I'm good with this opening. I mean, I don't. Yeah. Think, yeah. Or I can go back then and rework it if if, if I really should. No, it's it was good. No, okay, it's totally I think fine. It's good. Um, so Ruben, go over to screen share again on the side. Yep. And you'll have something that says like "stop screen sharing" or something. Yep. Yep. You want me back? And then you can come back. Yeah. If you want to. There come. I am. There <laughs> I am. Thank you for doing that. It just yeah. finished downloading, of yeah. course, as soon as Connie finished. So, so Connie, how did you feel doing that? I know you got to, a chance to, um, you know, be with Ruben in person. Yes. Um, did, awesome you get a, did, did you get a chance to practice that day that you were with Ruben? Uh, not, not like me delivering it. No. Okay. Just, so this is your first time actually delivering it. Yes. Okay. So how did you yeah. feel going through it for the first time? Oh, well, you know, it's always weird when you're, trying to do it this way. And I, I would like, normally I would walk around more. So like you're forced to kind of sit still because of the, such, yeah. you know, yep. yeah, I get it. So normally I would walk around more and that makes me feel more relaxed. And yeah. like in front of the classroom, like I used to teach years ago, I mean like in front of a classroom, then yeah, you just feel more relaxed. You're connected with people. It just like, that makes it all easier. We're here. It's kind of talking heads yep. and you're just, you know, you're trying to think, and you know, you have that better interaction, like, cause you walk toward the person when they talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. So I think not having that physical part just makes me feel wiggly jiggly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That makes sense. Now when I, yeah. and I, I do so many of these, so I completely, that's like the, uh, the, uh, what do they call it? The standard deviation when you do like an experiment, like I get that, that this is kind yeah. of a funky thing, but, and, and most people obviously are so much more comfortable when they're in person. Um, so I've had a few that have done better on Google Hangouts and I've seen them in person and they've frozen up. So, but that's rare. Um, oh. Yeah, I really like that energy of the like live people room in the room. Like mm -hmm. the room is sort of my past experience. Or like when you're coaching with your kids. I mean, what do you do? You you get I have little guys, so you know, you get down on their level and you're interacting right. and that kind of feeds you. Whereas here it's all just sort of static. You guys have seen this a million times before. I'm not telling you anything new that you don't didn't already know, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like it's just uh, well, I do, I do good. like, cause we like to use that analogy that we are coaching coaches. We're not teachers in a classroom. We are trying to get coaches motivated to go out and coach. So whatever energy coaching energy you would bring on in a real workshop, that's what we want to see because the coaches are expecting to be lectured at because that's what they yeah. think this is. When they see a PowerPoint, they see chairs set up, they expect to be lectured at. So that's why I like the way you said, like, this is a workshop. We're going to keep it moving. So anything you can do throughout your workshop to kind of inject that energy and enthusiasm and just, I mean, honestly, just coaching them up yeah, and is, I was uh, really is what we're looking for. Again, with my mm -hmm. teams, like when we're doing warm ups, I mean, I'm moving around, they're moving around, we're all talking. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I'm more kind of in that mode. And so it's weird to have to stay put. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. I get it. How about in terms of the um, the content? Did you feel pretty comfortable with the the information? I know I have to have it down cold because there's like no pausing, you know, like, you know, you're thinking about like, well, what does the audience need to hear? Not even, you know, just like, you know, that what are they, you know, what are they desiring at this point? What makes sense to them? So I felt like it was okay. I still have some improvement to go. Well, yeah, I mean, um, everybody I think, does. This is the first yeah, time doing it. So we, we were totally fine with that. Okay. So um, I, Ruben, did you want to, I know you got to meet Connie in person, but you didn't really get to see her um, deliver any part of a workshop. Would you like yeah, to give her some feedback? Yeah, I'll give her a little bit, just sure. a little bit. Um, so, so Connie, I thought you were very smooth. Um, I thought, I thought, um, you know, uh, you used the, the PowerPoint as an aid um, and it, it, it didn't feel like it was, uh, the PowerPoint was overwhelming. Uh, you know, I, I, I thought that, I thought your pace was good. You know, you, you did that open in 11 minutes and it probably would take a little longer. It might, might extend to 15, 16 minutes with a live group, but that's good because that leaves you the time we want to leave for the meat of the workshop, which is the principles and the, and the tools, you know? So, um, I, I, you know, I, th I thought it was good. Uh, I, I think, I think I'll stop there, Kelly. Okay. I did notice Ruben going through this. There's no videos in the one hour PowerPoint, is there? Uh, there's either none or there might be one. There was like quote, I don't know if that was a video, the Gunderson quote, like later on. Um, Curtis Granderson, yeah. Granderson, oh, there is, there's one, okay. 
Okay, but I think I guess yeah. that's the only and, one. And of course, okay. of course, if 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 Connie decides this is the deck she's gonna work off of, um, of course she can pull in one mm -hmm. or two of the videos from the full deck into this. Yep. Um, although it's likely at the time that Connie eventually gets certified that we'll have a, a whole new version of this, you yeah. know, or, a, a, or a substantially revised version of this workshop. So, yeah. Okay, great. Um, Connie, I really, I really enjoyed what you did. I think you, you know, we, I putting nerves aside, yeah. I think I could see, you know, your personality came out. You're just a really upbeat person and you can, and that comes through. And it sounds really cliche to say like, we want our trainers to be positive, but you'd be surprised how many people are like, you know, very serious about what they do. And I'm like, come on, loosen up. Yeah. This is a positive coaching alliance. You're supposed to be having fun here. So I really right. like that. I like that vibe that you set off, that you were definitely a positive, you were smiling, you were talking about it. Um, the part that I, the reason that I said I want to, I wanted to hear why you got into PCA and it doesn't have to be scripted. It doesn't have to be practiced. It's just, it helps me to connect with you and it would also help the coaches. So the one thing I think in the introduction to the workshop that was missing that I would love to hear more is a personal story. Yeah. Um, you know, okay. you talked about, you know, you, you have an example of when the strongest player yells at an official. Well, I don't want a hypothetical example. You know, give me a real example. Give me something okay. that happened from your coaching where you were personally challenged. Because I think sometimes, sometimes coaches in the room might think that, okay, Connie Katie is like this perfect coach. And so it, it kind of puts a little bit of a wall between you. So it's nice when you say, you know what, we've all struggled with this. I've had a player that was my best player, you know, whatever. And he or she would always scream at the officials. And, you know, just to make that personal connection right off the bat in a workshop helps mm -hmm. the coaches to be more comfortable with you. And then if you ask a question, you're like nobody wants to be the guy that raises his hand and says, well, here's how I screwed up. But if yeah. you kind of start that by saying, hey, we've all struggled, this is what we do. Then when you ask for yeah. examples, they might be more willing to. Um, but I do like the way you mixed it up. You had us talk to a partner. You called on us for, you know, you definitely did a good job at keeping us engaged. Um, and that's going to be really important. That's what makes us different than a lecture or a class or something like that. So I think you did a nice job with that. So personally, that was my that was my um, only opportunity that I see for growth is that I want to hear more about who you are and why you're here and what you're doing. And, you know, I don't know, you know, even just somebody reading your bio in the beginning, um, people forget that or they don't yeah. like, unless you're a NBA all-star, they don't really listen to like, I've coached youth work. Right. Like they don't really, coaches don't really care about that as much. Unless like my resume is not, you know, I didn't coach volleyball at Stanford. So mm -hmm. I don't really put a lot of um, clout into my coaching resume as much as I do the experience I've had with players I've coached mm -hmm. because that experience coaches can connect with me. Whether they knew I coached division two basketball, like they don't really care. <laughs> You know, yeah. and I think that is for me personally, that is my strength is all these experiences and really kind of like learning. Um, yes, learning from PCA and what it offers, but like, like in real time too. you know, think back like coaching a little over approaching 15 years now, but really over time, you know, starting with some of those negative techniques, because that's just all I knew or observing yes. others doing that and like realizing that wasn't so good. And then getting input from PCA and trying to instill that. And now I feel like, and how many years it took a little embarrassing, but now I feel like gosh, it really does work. I feel like I have the magic potion, you know, for getting the best out of athletes. And so I, I can see like, that's what you're saying, like more that kind of personal part has to come so, out like, oh, it's really- what you, what you just said is your intro. That yeah. is your intro right there, the magic potion. I mean, just the way you just said it, you were relaxed. You were like, gosh, it's kind of embarrassing to say how long it took me to figure this out, but I did what other coaches did and there was a lot of negativity because I thought that's what you did. And that's your intro. Yeah. That right there would make me go, wow, I want to hear this because if I've been coaching for 15 years and it's still not going great, or I've been coaching for one year, I'm like, okay, I want to hear what this lady has to say. If she has the magic potion, this is what yeah. I want to, this is what I want to hear. So really, your introduction. Yeah, for real, like only in like the more recent years, uh, cause like I don't have a pressure on me as a, my child's not in on the team or anything. And I, I've just been able to like really kind of practice, so to speak with young players and seeing like, oh my God, like they just, slurp it up right i mean the, the positivity and then they try harder and just it all just comes together and they're like you know athletically the same as any other team i've gotten any other year it's just that it's using that positive approach gets the best out of them so Bam. i mean that's so that's good it. that's, that's so good. yeah that's, that's so much so better good. than what you just did <laughs> i mean that's the introduction that's what we want to hear we know what's i mean the slides are important the information is important but the coaches are going to be moved like i'm moved right now 
Number one, because you're coaching, you're not even coaching your own kids. I mean, how many youth coaches are out there because they enjoy coaching? That to me is like crazy. You know, I wouldn't have started youth coaching if my kids weren't on the team. Um, if I wasn't getting paid, I don't know if you're getting paid or not, but that's no, that I mean, is a complete level of insanity. It's just so much fun though. And, and right. then being able to share that with parents and, and yeah, I mean, that's all I want. That's exactly what I want to share is, um, you know, like I do remember what it was like to be the parent coach and not even particularly knowing that sport that well and just scrambling and doing the best you can. And I do remember that. So here's some helpful yeah. tools and that are, you know, generic enough that they apply to any sport. Yeah. And um, yeah, that is what, and so, that, okay, that just makes me so much happier because it's not like you're, <laughs> that, that's, I guess that's the part that was missing for me too, you know, like, sure, I have to know the material like cold, but um, yeah, it, it's the opportunity to interject those personal experiences that just make it all so satisfying then for me too. Mm -hmm. And the other part of it too, in the room of, if you have 30 coaches in the room, you have 30 more passionate coaching stories. So we want you to pull that out of them as well, because I mean, I have been, and I'm sure Ruben can say the same thing. We, I've been blown away at workshops by some of the stories that you hear. And I think, wow, what if I never gave that guy or that woman the opportunity to share that? And that was better than anything I could have said. So just making sure that you're intentional about pulling those stories out of the coaches as well. I always keep in the back of my mind. And I even have a, I have a um, paper that I put out before every workshop and I put it right on right next to my laptop that says, ask, don't tell. Because I have a tendency to tell more than ask. And if I just keep that as a reminder, ask, don't tell, <laughs> well, then right, right before I, I come up with a new topic, I'm like, let me find out from them first. And then I have my little story in my back pocket in case theirs doesn't quite fit the mark. And doesn't coaching work the exact way? I mean, you're right. So I think slowly over time, I realize of any scenario, if I asked, I'd figure out where they were at, uh, get some really clever answers. Mm -hmm. I'm you know, to constantly learn. Even, yeah. I'm talking about 10 year olds, but I'm still learning about coaching um, yeah. from with 10 year olds. So yep. yeah, I, I agree. Ask not tell that that is ex exactly how all of education seems to work to me. Exactly. I so I think you're in good shape. I'm excited to see. So the next one that you would do would be for one of the principals. And sure. again, the principals are the part where those are the concrete things that coaches are dying for. They want to know what can I do to help fill the tanks of these little people so that they can perform. So it's a little bit different. It's not as much of a commercial for PCA as the introduction is. It's more of like, here's what, here's the research behind it. Here's a connection scenario. So you can sort of connect it to what you're doing. And uh -huh. then here's a toolbox that you can, these are physical things that you can take with you and do tomorrow at practice. So yeah. I think you're in, you're in good shape for that. I'm excited to see you do the next one. Yeah, and the immediacy of that has got to be really satisfying for Absolutely. people in the workshop. Like, okay, I don't. There's not umpteen steps or some book I have to read. Yeah, you know, I can just do it and start seeing what yeah. happens. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'll send you this recording so you can watch it back if you want to. Um, but let me know. I'm actually on vacation next week. If you want to get in another demo before that, um, actually, I think Ruben's going to be away too. So yeah. let us know first week in August. <laughs> yeah. And uh, first week in August, then I'm I'm gone for. Uh, about a week in there in the middle of August. So yes, I okay. want to get some stuff done in the beginning of August then. Okay. And if you want to do two of the principles back to back, you're welcome to, if you want to do like yeah. the tank to Elm Tree Mastery. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Okay. I, I, I will. I'll do like, um, let's see, what was it? It was, uh, um, if filling emotional tanks, that's that to me seemed a little bit longer, but then maybe like do that one as one and then do the other two together. It probably makes sense. That's fine. Sure. That's great. Okay. All right. Thanks, Connie. Right. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.